Hey guys, this is Axe Martin Hunt here, back in Naval Action, and today I'm starting a new series, something a little bit different. Not going to be gameplay based, it's going to be um, factual. It's going to be factual, we're going to learn some stuff. Um, it's always good if you can get entertained and learn something in the process. So what I'm going to be doing in this series is, um, I'm going to be um, discussing the histories of the real life counterparts of the ships in Naval Action. Now, I'm going to start with a quick point is that some of the ships in Naval Action have been generalised. You've got the basic cutter, which wasn't a ship, obviously. it was. It's just a generalisation of a certain kind of ship back uh, way back when. Um, uh, obviously, episodes that f are featuring named vessels, uh, such as uh, the Victory, the USS Constitution and stuff like that, they're going to be a lot more in-depth. They're going to be... Um, they're going to be a lot longer, for sure, and uh, a little bit more interesting. But uh, we've got to start somewhere, so what I'm going to start with today is the basic cutter. I'm going to give you a little bit of information about what a cutter is, uh, a little bit of information about the ship itself in-game, and uh, let's learn some stuff. So let's get on with it. So, the basic cutter. It has a battle rating of 30. Uh, she requires 40 crew. Obviously you can do that in first rank in the game. Carries 12 guns at 6 a side with a max of 6 pound cannons or 12 pound carronades so you can have 6 pound medium or long cannons or 12 pound carronades I will be making videos discussing the differences between cannons and carronades um, and stuff like that later on uh, but okay, the cutter, let's talk about the cutter now uh, before I begin I just want to make the point that my naval history knowledge is mostly based around British naval history so that's what I'm drawing on for this video and for a lot of the videos that I'm going to be making in the future just to let you know you know it all comes from British naval history for me that's where my passion is so cutter what is a cutter well in British naval history a cutter wasn't a particular design of ship it wasn't uh, uh, a way of rigging the sails or anything like that. It's a classification of ship, much in the same way that third rate is a classification of ship. First rate, you know, third rate's like a, I don't know what's a what's a third rate HMS, HMS Alfred, uh, or a first rate, which is uh, HMS Victory, or the Santisma Trinidad, which is also classed as a first rate, the biggest first rate, um, bigger than Victory, but that's for later on. Uh, as well as you'd get frigates and corvettes and stuff like that. They're all classifications of ships. And you can have many different designs and many different layouts and all kinds of different sail plans. Um, but they, generally they'd be generalised into a category of ship. Uh, now cutters, or the word cutter, was a classification of ship. It was the lowest classification of ship that the British Navy had. And it was the lowest classification a ship could be in the British Royal Navy. Now, generally, the majority of cutters were fore and aft rig ships. Now, I'm going to be making another video later on that will discuss different sail plans and uh, what a fore and aft rig is and what a square rig ship is and, and the differences between those kinds of sails and how it affects you in naval action. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to talk about it. Most cutters were fore and aft rigged, but there was a notable exception. The most famous cutter of all time was a three-masted square rig ship called HMS Bounty. Uh, you might have heard of the HMS Bounty because it's um, been immortalised in um, Hollywood and in books and all over the place. Uh, Mutiny on the Bounty. You must have heard of Mutiny on the Bounty, right? Yeah, of course you have. Everyone has. Um, now, Bounty, obviously, like I've just said, was a three-masted square rig ship. Um, she was classified as a cutter. It's just one of life's ironies that uh, the most famous cutter of all time didn't really fit the traditional definition of cutter at all. Now small cutters of the kind depicted in naval action were widely used by many navies in the 18th and 17th centuries in varying roles but were mostly used as coastal patrol vessels, patrolling designated stretches of coastline on the lookout for any threats or potential captures. Uh, like a nice fat trader, just, in, uh, just like naval action. Generally, what you do in a cutter, maybe look for traders for other cutters, lynxes to fight. But why were cutters so good at this? Why were they used mainly as uh, coastal patrol vessels? Well, it's because of their fore and aft rigged sails. They were excellent, at, as uh, forgive me if you don't understand this term, but they were excellent at sailing close hauled 
on either a port or starboard tack. Again, I will explain that in a separate video, but a quick ex explanation is they were better at sailing with wind that wasn't as good for squaring ships. So, like a side on wind, a cutter would still be able to travel forward reasonably quickly. A lot quicker than a square ship, say a frigate or, um, I don't know, a bigger sloop or something like that. So this gave them a huge advantage um, over bigger ships that would struggle in uh, adverse wind conditions. It meant they were able to get information and um, intelligence back to wherever they needed to get it back to, whether it was uh, a command ship within a fleet, whether it's a blockading fleet or a home port fleet. Uh, or whether they needed to get it back to port and on land. But they were also used for um, things other than coastal patrols. They were also used uh, as customs vessels, uh, checking cargo of incoming vessels. They were also uh, used as escorts for um, various ships, maybe traders, or um, as lookouts for larger fleets. And they were also used for carrying personnel and dispatches to wherever they needed to be. You'd also find cutters uh, in harbours. Um, I don't know where ships were being fitted out, uh, waiting for their crews and waiting for supplies and stuff like that. You'd find cutters transporting personnel to particular ships. Maybe, um, let's say you're a captain and you, uh, you've you been ordered to take control of a frigate that's uh, out in the harbour. You're not going to exactly be able to swim to it, so it'll be a cutter that would probably take you. So um, they had uh, multiple uses in varying roles and uh, they definitely did their part in um, protecting Britain's shores against, uh, against her enemies. As well as Spanish shores and French shores and American shores and all, all shores around the world. So that's uh, been a quick overview of the cutter for you. I know it's not been the most interesting um, vessel to cover. Ships like uh, uh, the Renomi, I'm not going to even try and pronounce the French name for it. Um, ships like the Renomi... Uh, Obviously, victory in uh, Santissima uh, and the Constitution. I'm really looking forward on doing the Constitution. Ships like those are gonna are gonna have much longer, much more in detail episodes that are gonna be uh, that are gonna go into a lot more history than ships that are very general like the Cutter. So uh, forgive me for that. But if you have liked this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I'd be uh, really appreciative if you did. And um, Stay tuned for the next video. Okay, thanks everyone, and I'll see you next time.